It is wonderful to share this solemnity of the Immaculate Conception with you in our beautiful cathedral, titled after the Immaculate Conception, the patroness of our diocese and the patroness of our country. But you may be a little surprised that I'm not going to speak about Mary today, even though this is her great feast. And by that, I mean no disrespect and no disregard to her. But today, I would rather like to speak to you about Joseph. Joseph, her beloved spouse. And that is because beginning today, as perhaps you have already heard, I have declared for the Diocese of Wichita, beginning today, a year of St. Joseph, commemorating the 150th anniversary of the declaration of St. Joseph as the patron and protector of the Universal Church. This morning I learned that Pope Francis is taking my lead <laughs> and declaring his own year of St. Joseph for the Universal Church. I'm so honored, Holy Father, that you followed my example. Why St. Joseph? For many reasons. Like Mary, he too was chosen to play an essential, a significant role in the history of our salvation. Like Mary, the plan of God was revealed to him from heaven by an angel. Like Mary, he too was asked to give his own fiat, his own assent to the plan of God and to trust as she did in the providence of God. His brief and silent presence in the Gospels should in no way be seen as to diminish his importance. Without his obedience to God's will, the advent of Jesus in history would never have happened. Like Mary, he said yes to God. And he named Jesus, he named the child, which was his responsibility to do as the husband and the father, the legal father, if you will, to name his son, to name him as the angel had directed, Jesus. His was the call to flee to Egypt in order to protect the child from the forces of evil intent on destroying him. And then by the direction of the angel to return to Nazareth and there to provide a home, to provide a livelihood, albeit one of an impoverished nature, but to offer this child a religious tradition and the guidance and support Jesus would need in his humanity to accept the mission of Messiah and Lord. All of this Joseph did as Mary accompanied him and did her own part essential as hers was too, in obedience, in complete fidelity, and in absolute trust to God's will. And they did it with an unshakable and a steadfast love. Friends, that is this example and this profound witness of Joseph, husband and foster father of Jesus, that inspires the church to look to him as our protector and as our patron, as we have done now for, for 150 years. For from his place in heaven, Joseph now looks upon you and upon me as his spiritual children. We who form the family of the church now and in this time and in this place on our pilgrimage to the kingdom of God, we very much need his protection and his intercession and his example in our dark and wayward times. It is my sincere hope and prayer that we will all strive to imitate his humility, his obedience, and his love, but I am particularly hopeful and prayerful that Joseph will inspire the men of our diocese, me, its bishop, all of our priests and deacons, our seminarians, 
all those who have embraced the vocation of, of marriage as husbands and fathers, grandfathers, godfathers, uncles, and, and all men to accept their role in their families and in the communities to which they belong. I also hope and pray that we will lift up St. Joseph for our younger men, those in high school and college, and those just beginning to live their young adult lives, that St. Joseph will inspire them to be men of integrity, to men of purity and chastity and courage in a time that tempts them to throw away their virtues and to live life solely on their own terms. Yes, St. Joseph can be a powerful intercessor for all men of the Catholic Church, and what a profound influence and difference that alone would make. I am personally praying that St. Joseph will inspire us in the important work of implementing our own diocesan pastoral plan fully alive as missionary disciples. As we embrace and begin to live out this plan, the, the mission of the joy of the gospel, we can look to no better examples than to Joseph and Mary, who accepted the mission entrusted to them and fulfilled it so perfectly as Jesus' first disciples in the, in the Holy Family. But as I reflect on the darkness of our current times and the many challenges we face in the church and in our culture, a culture that offers us a growing hostility toward religious liberty and religious practice. And given that I have heard the lament and anxiety of all of our pastors and parish priests, as well as from our faithful family members, of the many in our parishes and families who tragically and sadly no longer attend Mass, the Mass which is the source and summit of our Catholic faith, I am convinced that we will never be able to make progress in becoming fully alive as missionary disciples unless and until we can bring back many of those who absent themselves each Sunday and who for various reasons no longer see the need or know the need to worship and receive Jesus in the most blessed sacrament. This is a pastoral challenge of critical importance in our times. We all know that. We know of family members and friends who have left the faith and what a tragedy it is. And we cannot just simply sit by and do nothing about it. And so on this great day in which we acknowledge God's transformative grace in the very being of the humble virgin, and on which we dedicate this year to the patronage and protection of her obedient spouse, St. Joseph, I call all of us to an urgent period of prayer and discernment on all levels of diocesan life, our diocesan curia, all our parishes, schools, hospitals, college campuses, religious houses, all of our families, indeed wherever our people are to be found, a prayerful and urgent, a prayer and urgent discernment in order to begin to execute a diocesan-wide search and rescue mission to bring back the lost. And they are many, the wayward and the wandering souls to Christ to bring them back to the bread of life. While I do not pretend that this goal will will be readily or easily accomplished, and I am certain will require a multifaceted approach in order to bring about a true conversion of heart, I am confident that this is an urgent, a timely, and a critical mission for the whole Church, and in particular for our diocese, 
a mission that, if left unaccepted, will have devastating consequences for the future dynamism of the faith, for evangelization, for discipleship and stewardship. Therefore, I wish to commit the resources and the energy of our diocese to forming us all as missionary disciples. That's what it will take to go out, to invite back, and not only to invite back, but to encourage and to accompany our brothers and sisters who no longer join us at the altar of the Lord at Holy Mass. As your bishop, let me be the first to call all those in our diocese, in our parishes, and in, in our families who no longer share with us the Holy Eucharist, to call them lovingly, courageously, and faithfully to return now to be one with us at the altar of the Lord. Will you, my brothers and sisters in the faith, join me in an intense prayer and frequent fasting to ask God to give us a generous portion of the Holy Spirit to anoint these efforts in the months and years ahead and to give us the resolve and the determination, the compassion, the wisdom, the courage and the understanding to put our humble efforts at the service of the Lord in seeking out and searching and rescuing the lost and the lapsed who are our brothers and sisters in the faith. Together and throughout this year, let us call upon St. Joseph to help us in this critical mission. With his guidance and intercession, I remain confident we will witness many returning to the Eucharistic banquet of the Lord and strengthening the church over which St. Joseph serves as patron and protector. St. Joseph. Pray for us.